Hello, and welcome to Ask Lovecraft After Dark. We are joined in the new year by what's uh, essentially becoming my uh, unofficial co-host uh, for this program, Molly Tanzer. Molly, Hi. welcome. How are you? I'm doing all right. 2019. I'm, I'm, I prepared a quip. Whoa. Okay. I know, I know, I know. I, I don't want to pretend like I just came up with this, but I, I thought to myself, I should say something breezy and 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 very cool like i'm drinking rosé which is the wine that's most like me because it's very femme but also like way more acidic than it needs to be which that does not sound as cool as i thought it was gonna sound i'm sorry never mind uh i'm drinking blue moon out of a cup i got at a board game cafe because i am basic y'all nerd yeah these are real authentic fire king milk glass mugs that i found for um under market value at a local antique store so that's how boring i am everyone Ooh, check who got a bargain i did get a bargain on trash from the mid-century that no one wants but me yay that's kind of trash yeah. speaking of trash we are saying goodbye to 2018 we said oh goodbye God. 2008 except 2018 is still lingering into the year it feels i feel like there's kind of like a new kids on the block sort of like 80s no. like grabbing hold of the 90s kind of thing with uh, 2018 um but we are we are starting to pull away from it. Uh, what are you What are you saying goodbye to in 2018 that you're you're happy to say goodbye to? And what oh, are you saying goodbye to that you're happy or you're you're sad to say goodbye to? I what even happened? Like, I feel like I lived 10 years in 2018, so I can't. Even, I mean, everyone <laughs> did, right? Like, like I I I like everyone was shocked in late 2018 to remember that Black Panther came out in 2018, right? Like right? I was just like, is that true? Because for some reason, I think I was confusing its release date with um, actually great, much maligned motion picture, Blade Runner uh, 2049. But, um, cause I think they both came out in like the early spring and I, I thought Blade Runner came out this year. That's how long it's been. Like I, <clears throat> it's just really been- It's been a long year. It's been a long year. I'm ready to say goodbye to, um, the election year drama of 2018, I am not excited to see hello to the election <laughs> drama of 2019. I know it's not election year, but it might as well be because everything is terrible. Um, yeah. I am excited to um, keep, what's, what am I keeping in my, like, what am I keeping in my heart from 2018 that I'm experiencing now? Like in 2018, I decided on the goals I have for 2019 and I'm going to keep them into 2019. How about that? Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. They're, they're a relic from the past. So um, I am likewise sort of happily saying goodbye to um, to the election year. I mean, like oh. this was an election that I, I worked hard for. This was yeah. and and it was a sad election because we didn't come anywhere near winning. But like I actually phone banked people and I actually like went door to door like it was. Yeah the most involved I've been. And I feel like that's that's good, but also it was exhausting. And I know it's going to be exhausting again in the next 18 months. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I had, it I'm, I'm, it's, it's always weird. Oh no. Uh, local activism group, Jones Lanzuski yeah. puts it, you know, uh, democracy is walking the dog. You got to do it every day. So yeah. we are keeping it up, but uh, I'm going to say goodbye midterms. Uh, and, uh, uh, but sad, the sad thing I'm sort of saying, uh, goodbye to in 2018 was, it was, a, it was a transitional year, you know, for me, it was my first year as an elected official. It was my yeah. first year doing, uh, uh, after dark and having the Ask Lovecraft Appreciation Society. So like a lot of good things got mm -hmm. started and happened in 2018. And, um, uh, yeah. Uh, also, I guess uh, uh, another sad thing is uh, uh, Mis Miskatonic Musings, the other sort of horror project I've been part of, uh, is on uh, indefinite hiatus for the next little while. So I'm sort of sadly saying goodbye to that um, 2018. But there's a bunch of fun projects and stuff coming up in this year that I'm excited to talk about. And yeah. uh, But uh, Molly, what do you got coming up in 2019? Uh, What's exciting you? What's exciting me? What's exciting hold me? Hold up, hold up 2019 and tell me what sparks joy. What's, oh no. Oh, I'm going to get rid of all of my books. Um, <laughs> just like Marie Kondo told me to do. She told me to take them all outside and throw them into the dog pile. I don't know. Um, I am going to finish this book that I'm working on, you know, by 
By June of this year, I will have finished Creatures of Charm and Hunger, and it will be off to HMH for copy editing and all the other things that they do for me. Um, and so I'll have written another book. And um, I am going to try, no, I'm going to, I am going to write five short stories this year, and I'm, and not all of them are gonna be things that people ask me to write. I'm going to independently come up with ideas and work on those. And, um, but I do know that one of those that I haven't asked to write, although it's a very free form concept is with the, um, is just with like a publisher I'm, I'm hoping to be excited to work with again. And I can't really talk about it yet, but like I'm, I'm taking it back to the old school and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do things that I wanna do. And I'm, and I'm gonna follow my, my passion in 2019, which sounds so cheesy, but at the same time, like I, I really want to move into 2019 and have this be the year that I find what I have always loved about my craft again, because it's been hard to find in these pol in these political times, right? And I, I mean, the last two years have just been a feel like a constant punching and yeah. like a yeah. constant like having to hunker down and like okay, what's the next horrible thing that's going to come up? What like I I was I was going through I was looking through like photos or of stuff and just like finding just all like my really sad sack posts over the last few years brought me down. I was like, gosh, darn, has this been rough? I'm depressing on social. I just admit it now. Like, that's I mean, like, I know, I know folks who are like trying to, you know, I mean, they always say at the beginning of the year, we'll see if they keep it up, but who are trying to like do less social media in 2019 and be more like present and with people. And like, I'm doing a little bit of that. Like I'm trying to just like make it so that I see and have a conversation with an adult that I'm not related to. <laughs> Uh, at least like once a week, right? Like, cause as oh, a parent, yeah. as a stay-at-home dad, yeah, you know, like if, I, and um, I it, can be, it can be hard. For that because like you have to talk to the person who checks you in. Like it's, it's gotta be like a friend, right? Like it's, it's gotta be mm -hmm. drinks. That's it's, it's drinks with a friend is what I'm calling it. So like, I need to have like coffee or a beer with someone again that I'm not related to that. I don't live with <laughs> um, because and and this I know I'm very happy that I have this. I have like my my you know chance to chat with folks on After Dark, and we've got a really fun lineup of guests uh, already because I was bored at my in laws' house, so I just sent off a lot of thirsty emails to people, being like, "Hey, want to be on my show?" Yeah. Um, but um, but no, just like be having like a face to face conversation with someone is so really good. Oh oh, so we got some folks. Uh, someone's calling us a necromancer, which I'm not, but thank you. Uh, and someone else is slacking off on thesis research to watch us. So that I think is the, that is the greatest that service great. yeah. that we can I, offer. I, I approve of that as a as a as a grad school dropout. I approve of this mightily. <laughs> not that that's your thing. Don't I, I? But like, I'm not cursing you or anything. I'm just saying that, like, yeah, blow it off. Like, you can always do it tomorrow. That's very cool. Uh, but the most important reason why we're here tonight because it's 2019, Molly. Yeah. It's time to talk about ships. Okay, we need to talk about 2019's acceptable ships because apparently- We need to correct some ships. We need to correct some ships because I feel like people are getting pretty slack on their ships. And I feel like 2019 is gonna be a big year for ships because we've got, um, don't we have a Star Wars movie coming out? Do we have a Star Wars movie coming out? I should have done research. I, I was about to say like, well, of course Star Wars <laughs> is coming out this year. And then I realized I hadn't actually fact checked that at all. But like, I feel like- <laughs> Uh, let's see what's coming up. Uh, there's uh, episode nine, episode nine release date to yeah. May of, two, of May 24th. That can't be right. May? This year? I'm seeing Star Wars episode nine release date May 24th. That seems soon to have no, heard not nothing. True. Not true. What is the site? Untruthings.com? No, it's Variety. Oh. So. Well, well it's a big, well, and it's coming soon. This is gonna, this, these ships will be here soon. And we're going to all have to, we're going to learn who we were right to ship Ray with and who we weren't right to ship Ray with and how problematic the ships are that happened and how like other ships could be better. So I feel okay. like already that's a big deal. IGN is telling me December of this year, which seems that's what I way, oh, that, that, that feels yeah. way less crazy. Solo um, was anomalous in its spring release. Everything else. Well, it was all, and it was all bizarre and jacked yeah. up anyway with its, uh, I yeah. mean, I like Solo and there were some, okay. some, there was some problematic shipping stuff that happened in Solo with droids and whatnot, but oh yeah, oh yeah, I, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, okay, so yeah. okay, we've uh, we've got the first nautical pun. Someone is nominating the Queen Elizabeth II uh, for shipping. So well done. Um, uh, my shipping, my shipping stuff. I have to like actually. I'm. I have 
you know, dad syndrome. So I'm completely oh, yeah. cut off from like pop culture that is not Star Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, so like my shipping stuff is going to be, uh, I don't know, it's going to be an exploration. We're going to explore. So what what makes a good ship? Because like I am not traditionally a shipper. My wife is like right. my wife talks about how when she watches television as if she's like got two action figures in her hands and she's just banging oh. them together to make them kiss. Okay. Like, you know, so she, I'm there that for is, it. You know, that is definitely how she watches her TV. She is like down with some Outlander. Um, she's got a lot of thoughts still about Lost. <laughs> oh, okay. I never watched a single episode. I just know that it's maybe also about purgatory or so, I don't know, something. Well, it's okay. It, it, it's the dumbest thing. But anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to get, I only like okay. half watched Lost. And, okay. Um, I was more into the Battlestar Galactica and I definitely had some thoughts about There are some Battlestar ships Galactica. there as well and I've, that I've heard. I never watched Battlestar Galactica either because I, I, I just never yeah. got into it because I, Let's see. What, uh, okay, second uh, second nautical oh, yeah. uh, pun. Uh, one criteria uh, R. Thomas has is the ships have to be able to withstand icebergs. And I mean, Titanic was so, a massive like shipping movie. Mm -hmm. I know? feel so. I saw this. I saw this relatable tweet the other day about um, how all shit. It was like a change my mind style meme. Oh of yeah, identify with plus the character you have a crush on change my mind. And I laughed at that really hard because like honestly, it's. There's some that, truth in that. There is some truth in that. Um, but no, like I feel like with Stan and Iceberg, like the iceberg of what though, like if we're gonna run with this, because to me, like uh, shipping, what makes a great ship to me is great writing on the show to begin with. And I feel like that's why there were so many, um, like people had a lot of feelings about like She-Ra, the new She-Ra. Oh, okay. Because, we saw the yeah. first like two, three episodes. Oh my god, you've got to watch the rest. It's so good. Anyway, but um, but Catradora is a thing. Like Catra and Adora, like people ship them hard. I personally think it's actually explicit in the text that Catra is into Adora and Adora is by like everyone else on that show, except for Catra, who is like a hard lesbian. And I'm super there for it and I love it and I think it's great. Um can we can we, can we uh, do some clarifying of terms okay. as we talk about shipping? So yes. with with shippable projects mm. if it's an explicit romance does that mm. not count like or like if it's explicit romance yeah. from the get-go like i ship mm. sandra bullock and bill pullman and while you were sleeping but like that's a romantic comedy like that's i feel like that doesn't no, yeah count, no they right can't, they can't they can't like I, but, I mean, except but then there are things where they do eventually get like i was shipping tim and pam Talk, no, Tim and Dawn on The Office before they were like actually together. Oh well, yeah, well that I mean, but, I don't think you can retroactively de like I. You have to so, be if, if it's ongoing because we all binge things now and we forget yeah. that it used to be that things were like ongoing and and so it could take years to get to a place of like whatever. So like if you if you thought that the one true pairing on the nanny was the nanny and. The butler, like you had, you were going to be disappointed and you knew you were going to yeah. be disappointed, but you had to wait like however many absurd amount of seasons that show had. So until she got together with the Broadway producer, I don't know. Like I can only remember the song. The Beautician and the Beast. I don't know if that's the one I saw. Yeah, no, no, wait, that's a, that, that's a <laughs> film. Um, <laughs> ah. No, no, I think that, But no, like, I get exactly what you're talking about because yeah, like with, hmm. like Deep Space Nine, you know, had a yeah. lot of different mm. like sort of pairing options yeah, and stuff. Options. And for me, what like what I wanted was I wanted Dax Cisco because of that episode when Luxana Troy's like psychic hot flashes make everyone really horny for each other. Like and Dax and Cisco like get all they horny do? for each other. Which yeah. one? Which Dax? Jadzia. The, 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 the real one? Dax. Okay, yes. the good Dax. Wait, the first yeah. Dax. Dax yeah. one. Terry Farrell. Yes. So, like, Loxana Troy comes on the ship, or the mm -hmm. station, and she's all like, oh, hello, everyone. Loxana Troy is up in your business. Yeah, this thing I do. And she's like, oh, oh, no, I'm going to get up in your bucket. And Odo's like, oh, Quark. Um, this is the freshest content for 2019, by the way, is a discussion right? of hey guys. Design, so like, all right. <laughs> uh, but, but no, she's like going through beta Z menopause and as such, like all of her horniness is going into everyone else. And so I'm like some, so like sometimes <laughs> it's better, it's better than the, the, like the muse succubus who like, don't start with me. <laughs> yeah. Don't play. Um, 
but no, like, so like Quark gets really horny for uh, Keiko and uh, Bashir and, uh, oh, I'm going to get, and, and like Kira get horny for each other. And, and yeah, and like Dax and like Cisco, like make out hardcore. And I'm like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Oh, she's going with Worf. Uh, I suppose that's okay. Cassidy. Uh, all right. So like that for me is what the shipping is. Like there needs to be some element of like thwarting. Like they would yeah. be so, if I were writing it, me amateur, like it would be so good if it could, if I were in charge and could make my action figures kiss, but I'm not in charge. So I just have to sit on my hands and go harumph. And like, yeah. this can get really bad. Because yeah. I know this was a problem with Steven Universe, I think, where like the fan base got really aggressive about yeah. like shipping yeah, and like yeah. we're like attacking the actual showrunners <laughs> for not like making their one true pairings canon and like the like the canonicity of it becomes really important. But I don't yeah. know. Like I feel like there has to be like forbidden love on a meta level to really like make yeah, I make think this there has happen. to be a a, a an explicit but like subversive case to be made. I think you have okay. to be able to have evidence that it could be because like they have to be, they have to relate to one another. So like, I would say that um, like, so I, I, as the one human on earth who disliked the ending of Hannibal, like Ooh, I felt okay. like it was, yeah, as, as that one lone person. Sure. Um, was that just I too, felt, was that just too far? Was that it just was too, too far? It was too, I didn't, I wanted to, I wanted to, the show had been teasing me with all these ships. And then at the end, they, I just kind of, they like, they were teasing. Cause I feel like one I felt, well, and, and my, my, my buzzkill objection is that I felt like it was a little queer baby. And like my, sure. my writerly conviction was like, do or don't, you got canceled. Like, Nut up or shut up. I don't know. So like, I just uh, <laughs> look. They still had. They still had to play it safe so they could sell the cookbooks. I don't. Well, I don't know. Leo. But like, so, so like, but in that show, like, I would say, like, I mean, it, the shipping it was built in. Like, they knew that you were going to ship Will and Hannibal. And uh, did for, they know from the get go though, or did they like lean into it once they saw what the fan response was by season two? Back. Nicholson in that suit and then put him opposite <laughs> that frumpy boy from that movie that Princess is. And be like, Thank you. Stardust, Stardust was a fine film. Thank you no, very much. No, that's Stardust. Yeah, it's the Stardust guy. No, it's not. That's Daredevil. Who is the frumpy guy from Princess? He's in the one where she, uh, it's Ella Enchanted. Oh, he is Ella Enchanted. Excuse me. Like, it isn't Ella Enchanted. Don't even play. <laughs> My daughter had like a month where she was obsessed with Ellen Enchanted and we had to watch I that really garbage like movie over and over again. I didn't watch the whole film. I really enjoyed the book. I thought the book was um, like classic, almost third wave feminist YA. And I it was super good. I like, found it really creepy. I don't know. Yeah, it, it is really, really creepy. And like, yeah. just, I didn't like, yeah. I was like, I, I was asking a friend like, hey, I like Terry Pratchett. Can you recommend something like kind of fun fantasy? He's like, oh, read this. I'm like, oh, it's a girl who has no, like, like, it's, like no autonomy. As did many of us during less forward thinking times. I don't know. Fair, I thought, fair. I really enjoyed the, um, I just like the way that she found a workaround commands. Sure. I guess. Which, no, no it, was, it was very clever. It was, I just, I was super there for it, but it is strange. It was like a fraud. It's a fraud. I mean, all fairy tale retellings are fraud. Sure. Like you can't get away from what they are, but I, I don't know. The movie was a little too slapsticky for me, but. Um, anytime but that, Eric, anytime fun. Eric Idle shows up in your movie, like that's, that's. He didn't get that far. He's, I think he's like in the first five minutes. I think he's the narrator. <laughs> Maybe I was watching it on HBO. I don't know. I just know that there was a sound effect every time someone commanded her, and that was not what I was there for. No, it was bad. Uh, yeah. Although I think her sister was one of the like evil like shepherdesses from uh, Tenth Kingdom, which I was down for. Speaking of fairy tale retells, speaking of some more fresh content. Um, that's right. Yeah, me, like I don't. I am a shepherdess. Anyway, that's like a, a joke. No speaking one. Fresh, but... fresh. Oh, so and, <laughs> fresh and, and, Tenth Kingdom so, okay, humor. I feel like there's got to be a rich community, if small, of shippers from um, like Legend of the Seeker, which is the trash TV I'm watching right now. That like oh, old 2008 tell. Turkey. So Legend of the Seeker is based on these. Um, uh, 
beloved by others um, fantasy books called like the Sword of Truth series that are um, like Ayn Rand philosophy in a fantasy setting as written Whoa. by definitely he does a lot of karate and um, people love them and they are unabashedly kinky and, and even so I could not get into them and then I and then someone on Facebook told me about Legend of the Seeker which is they like Sam Raimi like the Xena team basically did a short-lived and unloved two season but still it's like 50 episodes of course um like <laughs> um village of the week style um sam raimi's show called legend of the seeker that is sort of kind of based in the books but is in my opinion superior for any number of reasons but it also definitely features like like a cult of women who dress in leather and are doms and have these like um, leather dildos that they like jab into your neck and then you feel pain and they make and they make you obey them and it's like it's does just that like, sound what? very Sam does that sound very Sam Raimi? No, that's just it, it was amazing. Like it's just it's very very strange and um, it's the kinkiest thing I've ever seen on network television and I'm. Um, it's very strange, um, but like speaking of like ships, like that that show again was like born to be shipped because like there's like a there's an explicit pairing between Richard Cipher and um, who is the main character and his um, virginal um, priestess girlfriend who can't ever bang him because she's part of this another order of women who uh, are magical who if they touch you if they choke you gently. Whoa! <laughs> if, they choke, if they choke you gently, and like mate, and like will it at you, then your eyes go black for a second, and then you say, "Command me, confessor," and they can make you do whatever for like the rest of you. And it's un, it's un, it's unredoable. Like once you're commanded by a confessor, you will always be under her power forever, and she can always make you do whatever you want. And they wear these virginal. This is the, again, like I'm just like, okay, okay, cool. And so, um, so she can never bang him because. It is just known that if you are one of these, um, whatever the confessors, that if that like you can't control your power to confess someone um, when you are having an orgasm, and so like she would confess the seeker if they were ever to bone, and then he'd instead of completing his seeker's quest, like protect her because he would be like confessed by her. So this is their like erotic tension throughout the novel is like they want to bang but can't because if she came, she'd ruin everything and then he couldn't fight this guy who basically looks like snape but shirtless and hot i don't know and, um, and okay so like it's a bit like a bit like touching daisy or not touching daisy yeah oh yeah, 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 yeah pushing daisies it's just like pushing daisies which is like again thing. a very explicit romance but like it had that shipper energy ship. it did have shipper it had big shipper energy but it wasn't true shipping because i feel like their attraction was explicit whereas like like people who are still like think that like Harry and Hermione should have hooked up. Oh, okay. Like like latch onto like five things in the text, and they're like, no, this shows that truly. But so pushing daisies, but pushing daisies did manage to I think capture a little bit of that because they added the Olive Snook kind of like unrequited love thing, I and like, like I five episodes. Well, I mean, there were only like eight episodes. Oh, really? So, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I I got shown got, it, one night, and I was not. It got canceled after two seasons. I, it was one okay. of these shows that like got killed during the writer's strike. Like it was oh, doing really, really right. well and then right. sort of fell apart. Um, but uh, but yeah, like it had sort of, you know, like this main love romance, like tension, yeah. what have you. But then there was like the like other girl who was kind of pining for the guy and like oh, yeah. he sort of had had a relation or like like he could have had. A, so I don't know. It had mm -hmm. that sense of verboten, which I think, again, that's kind of like forbidden metatextual quality. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which, you know, a lot of times can just be like, they're both boys, which is, you know, sort of the Sherlock Holmes Watson kind yeah. of thing I don't uh, that, that gets applied. And I'd like, or, uh, and I'd like, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, or Jordy and Data. That was my other example. Do people ship them? Of course people ship them. Why did I just ask that question? I had no, <laughs> I've never encountered this ship. I don't know if it's a legit ship or like a quirky. <laughs> Not a legit ship, like oh, you're bad. If but like whether anyone's just like Jordy Data, mm, you know, like in my heart. <laughs> I'm pocket. sure someone out there makes that face thinking about it. Actually, like I, I would stake my fortune on it. Oh, here's an interesting thing. Um, uh, the reason people wanted Hermione and Harry is because they cast her way too cute for the films. But I do appreciate that Ron got the hottie instead. 
I mean, it's a problem of like they cast children, and some of the children wound up being yeah, more attractive. Sort of like Neville. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, that's the real, the real surprise out of everything. Yeah, yeah. No, I like. I feel like. I don't, I, I would push back at several claims made in that statement, but I, yes. I don't know. Like, I, I just always feel like I don't love that. Like as someone who's highly invested in Harry Potter and I'm currently horrified by the Harry Potter news of the day, which is that wizards all just used to poop themselves for no understandable reason. And I like, like come and get what, your girl, JK, what are you doing? Like, I don't what, know. What on earth guys? Come Why? on. Why is that cool? Why? Is, I don't know. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> I do I do like all the people writing those scenes with like Draco like glowering at Harry Potter being like, this is what a wizard does, Potter. Yeah, <laughs> it's so gross. Like not cool. I don't I I don't understand it. But like, wait, why was I oh I was talking about Harry Potter because oh I, I feel like there is actually a good reason that Harry and Ron ended up together, which is that Hermione has notorious and text textual explicit terrible taste in them. Oh, there we go. And so it makes sense that she would be like, yes, this man, but like, I don't know. I just, I also like Harry and Ginny and I don't care. I'm a Harry Ginny truther. I think that they are great. So I, you, I have what, my opinions about Harry Potter. Things. What do you feel are your more controversial ships or are you a fairly sh safe shipper? I don't, I don't, do I ship? I was, I was, I was arguing with someone whether I shipped because indeed I do have a massive crush on Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. And mm. I know that he is everything. I don't want to hear it. Um, I don't want to hear it from the <laughs> fantasy <laughs> about Kylo Ren. Like I was called out hard by Twitter when they came up with the concept of the depressive demon nightmare boy being the opposite <laughs> of the manic pixie dream girl. And I was like, and there are two, uh, there are two examples where Kylo Ren and the Phantom of the Opera. And I was like, I hate this tweet. <laughs> and it's stuck. It's stuck with me ever since. But um, so yeah, I I do like him, and I I don't know. I I don't. But but do, like this question of like um like who is Ray gonna kind of make out with if she makes out with anyone? Like will she make out at all? And if she does, who with whom will she make out? Still ends with the purpose anyway. Um, out and like sure, I like her Ray? final Kylo Ren. Like I I don't have I don't have the moral objections that people have to them because. I personally think he is a frustrated virgin who likes to tie up girls, but doesn't know how to process that yet. And like, you know, like who hasn't been there? And so he can just, <laughs> he is a murderer and terrible. And I understand all the things that are bad, but you know, I think there's something there, but like the people I'm fascinated by are the people who are like, no, Ray is absolutely the one true pair with Poe, because oh, oh what? Yeah, Poe. Have, have, they, have they interacted? They did at the end of the Last Jedi. He gives her those Poe eyes, and people just like, and it's like he has looked at everything, including BB-8, with that same expression. I was about, like, I was about to say, Poe. like that's what he do. And they're like, no, clearly he was like, oh, I've heard about you, Ray, and she's like, I heard about you too. And I was like, oh. <laughs> I, I will, I, I, I don't see. Uh, but. And and so in preparation for this, we were talking about shipping and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and I, I sent Molly a video, uh, which is uh, a friend of a friend who does this thing called the Shipping Manifest. He's got a YouTube show called The uh, Henchman or something Henchman. And he was talking about shipping and talking about Star Wars and sort of relationships and whatnot. And it was it was interesting, right? Like I feel like he was talking about it almost more in this kind of like friendship or but but like. Nevertheless, it was really I really liked what he took away, which is you know the whole sort of shipping impulse get Star Wars because Star Wars is about relationships. It's about people caring for each other and like there being grand galactic politics happening. But in the end, like people racing off to stupidly go rescue someone who they think is in trouble, even if that person isn't in trouble. So, you know, Luke and Han going to rescue Leia, you know, Leia and Luke going to rescue Han. Uh, uh, you know, Finn and Poe trying to rescue Ray, who does, you know, and then like, so, you know, it's all this sort of like running back and forth, which is driving the plot while spaceships are shooting at each other. And I just listened, uh, I did a big road trip and I was listening to uh, the audiobook for, uh, from a certain point of view, uh, which was a collection of short stories written by about 40 different authors, like uh, Daniel Jose Older and Nady Okorafor and Chuck Wendig and, Griffin McElroy and all these writers just of characters in Star Wars around the main action of Star Wars and sort of, you know, sort of them like on the periphery of what's happening in the movie. So it like starts with Captain Antilles 
like dealing with his ship being boarded. And then it goes to a random stormtrooper who captures Princess Leia. And then like one of my favorites, which is the sad little like ship gunner who chose not to shoot at the escape pod. So it like keeps following these people. And the really sort of powerful stories were these very like emotional, like stories of people being invested in this world because of who they cared about and like what they cared about. And it was like, that was more touching than sort of like, stories that were just politics, politics, big plot, or like Aunt Maru talking about like how she was gonna open up a cafe and make blue milk cheese. Huh. So relationships are important to Star Wars. They are and important. I think I'm and sorry. so <laughs> giving everyone a chance to really uh, think about that cheese. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, there was a fantastic one, which is uh, all about Grand Moff Tarkin and his like uh, erotic adventures with a stormtrooper. So, what's the title of this book again? It's called "From a Certain Point of View." Okay, wow, well, I'm gonna just not ever read that because it sounds absolutely like nothing I'd want to read. So, oh snap! Whoa, <laughs> just throwing kidding. some shade on my show, Molly. No, there no, we go. I, no, I was, I was, I was self-immolating over my interest in Peter Cushing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is strong. Um, Fair enough. All right, all right, all right, all right. That sounds great. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, but like, and like Star Trek, I think has also, you know, I think that's the origin of Slash, right? The kind of like the Kirk is. Spock business. And I and I feel like the like I mean, people the ships have become so political. I mean, along with everything else in the modern sure. era. But I do, I do, I remember how I felt when I discovered that there was like a dedicated fan community of people who wrote about like. Kirk and Spock and like, um, and how they were finding this place to talk about like desire and, and their own desire. And then like all these other things like through non monetized fiction, right? Which is like, I, I mean, I'm not anti fan fiction. Like I, I, I know it's like a hot topic among authors among like, you know, should you fanfic or should you not? And I've always been like, as long as people aren't stealing, I don't see how it's any different from like imagining it. Um, I like the fan fiction. I like fan fiction as a as as a thing. I mean, obviously, there's like dark edges to it, but I'm just trying to stay positive in 2019. And so, like, it does give people a place to explore artistically and romantically, and like think about things and think about gender and think about all these things and. Um, I don't know, I think it's kind of charming, but at the same time, it's when people get, like you were talking, I remember that Steven Universe thing and just being like, this is that show for kids with like gemstone warriors and sure. I don't watch it. And I, and but it's- But it, like, it had like a lot of like queer themes in it. I wanna say did, the yeah. showrunner was non-binary or like, anyway, there, yeah. was, there was just a lot of queerness that was both, I think coded, but also fairly explicit. Yeah. So people got like, oh, this is for us, but then became, yeah. this is ours. And that yeah. I think is where and things got. And that's where I draw the line. Like I, I mean, and that, and where I was sort of ambling with my, my Kylo Ren and Ray thing, which I've been highly publicly interested in and, 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 and unrepentant about. Um, but like, if they don't get together, I'm not going to like riot. It's not sure. like Ren or riot here. It's like where I, sure. Like I've spent some time thinking about Star Wars, but like, <laughs> I, if if it doesn't resolve in the way I want, like I want to know where the the story is going. Like my issue with the prequel trilogy is not that I didn't see, you know, Obi Wan. I don't know. I just my issue was that they were poorly told stories, in my opinion, um, that were irrelevant to appreciating the broader universe. Whereas like the new trilogy, I'm super into because I feel like it's enhancing my appreciation of Star Wars. But like, if at the end of the day my ships aren't where they go, I'm. I don't think I'm. I think I'm more curious to see how they resolve these amazing friendships and weird tensions more than I am like needing to see, like Ray go to the dark side or Kylo Ren be like, "You've convinced me with your martial arts that I should be good," and it's like, eh, like we'll see. What did you? What did you? What did you feel about the Rose Finn situation? I. <sighs> Like, that's all that was the other contentious thing. I know. I don't care about it. Like I know that's like not a great opinion, but like I um oh. what? What did I say? Oh, just you, you pause there for a second. Oh, sorry. No, I just don't I'm not they're free to do what they wish. Sure. I don't have a claim staked in there. Ni neither of them like are ever like 
like yeah, the moment when Finn sparks that lightsaber in the forest, like I remember just like crying during, not as much as when Ray picked it up because like, I'm sorry, I can only be who I am. And that just like, <laughs> and it was just like a catharsis. I didn't know I'd been holding my breath. I mean, I did not know that I needed that air until I had it in my lungs. I'm like, so she's the one I'm most interested in. And like the Finn Rose thing, like I, I'm glad it, I'm, I'm sorry it makes people mad. I'm glad people it makes people happy. It's for them. Like I have no vested interest in it whatsoever. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have that. Was not my main issues with no. that film. No, and I uh, don't care. And I'm not a. I'm not a Finn Ray truther either. I think that they seem like buds. <laughs> I don't know. They never. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, I'm interested. I'm interested more in like the themes of redemption that could mm -hmm. potentially take place yeah. with Kylo Ren, yeah. like and like what that yeah. relationship means as far as that goes like can he be can they be together and he be unredeemed or like can they not be together but he still somehow be redeemed like that i find more yeah. interesting the, than like who's kissing whom at the end of the film i will say yeah and that and and same for me because like my my desire that i i want to see in this film and this is my only one true desire is that i do not want kylo ren to be dead at the end and it's not because i think he's cute it is because I don't think that he should get the easy out of Darth Vader because Darth Vader never is accountable for his terrible actions. He's redeemed and then dies. And like, maybe he thinks a lot about it as a blue ghost, but he does not have to live <laughs> with the consequences of his actions. It's very, it's, it's like a, it's like a chick track where like the guy yeah. who's like, like had the wayward life, yeah. like come to Jesus and then instantly dies. So there has to be like no oh, ramifications. No. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I want Kylo Ren to have to live a very long rest of his life knowing exactly what he did. And for whom and why. And I think yep. he needs to have terrible self-knowledge come to him. And I think he needs to survive it as punishment and like, or as part of his punishment. And like, so I will personally be annoyed if he dies, unless he dies, if he, if he dies, if he dies unrepentant, okay. But if he dies repentant, I'll be annoyed because that's cheap. It's been done. And I know it's there's, done. these are remixes and people are playing with stuff, but no, I, I definitely see what you're nah. saying. Yeah. No, nah, he needs accountability. And uh, we've got, We've got oh. someone over here who uh, is, says they don't want a Star Wars universe that doesn't have Kyle Katarn in it. So I'm really happy to see some Dark Forces truthers I coming out. I don't know what that is. I'm oh, it's Kyle, Kyle, Kyle Katarn was the character in like multiple video games that like were like between the Star Wars, some of the Star Wars films, like uh, Air, not Air of the Empire, Shadow of the Empire, the and and I've, stuff I've like heard. that. They're they're so ridiculous. But uh, so I'm happy. To, I'm just doing uh sort of like Zuko from Avatar. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry, not Kyle Katarn. He's talking about Kylo Ren now. I'm I'm hoping. Um, oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. Zuko like, Zuko's a good model for the antihero who kind of comes. Oh, back. and that's a that's a fresh ship. Um, yeah, no, like that that whole shipping universe of the Avatar: The Last Airbender was also super intense too. And I don't know if you ever watched that show. I I, I saw uh, Avatar. I did not see the. Other one, the new like oh, next Cora. generation, Cora. Yes, Cora is there for the people who need it. Um, I like the original one just fine, and I. Um, but the Zutara shippers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're very very vocal about it, and I get it. And it, and it, but I mean, and that's and that's another smart thing they did is that they I think those two are very shippable. When we get the fire and the water, they got that tension is there, and they're like older, and obviously Zuko is, like. Of an angsty teen and and teen girls, you know, like that seems appealing when you're that age and stuff. And so, um, but Plus yeah, he the, was he was Rufio. He was Rufio, and the sad sack, um, angsty boyfriend in this like gay comedy from the early aughts called like the Broken Hearts Club. And like, oh, um, okay, yeah, he is also in that film. And I was like, why do I know this man? And then I was like, <laughs> Rufio, oh. Yeah. Never unhappy to hear him. My current, so things I'm currently shipping that are currently oh, going yeah, on. Yeah. Let's I'm like, talk about I'm our current ships. Yeah. Like, cause I, again, I'm, I'm, I got dad syndrome. I'm not watching a lot of television. Um, mm -hmm. you know, television, I am watching stuff that's coming back. Brooklyn nine, nine is coming back, but like, I feel like all my people in Brooklyn nine, nine are hooked up at this point. Like there's nothing oh. really for me to like follow there, but what I am excited to see because they are definitely setting it up for like multiple choice, choose your own adventure is crazy ex-girlfriend. This is the final season of crazy ex-girlfriend. Oh, they okay. are, they are very aware. It's the final season of crazy ex-girlfriend. And like, they are definitely like, here's Rebecca's like three options. And 
my wife and I are on two different teams as far oh, as who no. we want to see who we want to see Rebecca uh, wind up with uh, because I'm all about well okay I'm torn because I I loved Greg I don't know if you watched Crazy Ex Girlfriend if you didn't watch Crazy Ex Girlfriend I've I'm seen sorry like seven episodes okay. Well, you've got Josh, who's like the one she's originally in love with for yes. like high school. And then you've got yeah. his friend, Greg, who like is essentially the one she kind of settles for because she can't be with Josh. And is then- she, is, is he working at a tiki bar? Mm, or a bar? Think, he did work at a bar and then he went away for a season and then came back mm. and they recast it with the guy from uh, the Anna Ferris like uh, movie about women singing and like lip sync or not lip syncing, but doing like, not bring it on. Noises off? No, not noises off. That's a stage play. Uh, anyway, they replaced the actor, which was very strange. Uh, oh, so okay. I'm like, kind of like, oh, okay. So someone here is Team Nathaniel uh, uh, as well. So I'm glad I'm at least speaking to someone here. Um, but yeah, like, like you've got like three different options. The like kind of, you know, main person that she's been in love with since she was high school. Yeah. His like kind of sad sack, alcoholic, like snarky, kind of constantly negging her obnoxious uh, friend. And then they introduced... Uh, rich, obnoxious, awful, but like slowly getting better, also nagging her all the time, Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. And that's who my wife wants her to be with. She is like taking her Nathaniel action figure and her Rebecca action figure and oh, like smashing right. them together. Um, and like, I would have definitely been like, oh, I kind of wanted her and Greg, but like it's new Greg who's mm -hmm. okay. But like, it's not my boy Greg who is yeah. Santino Fontana, who is like the evil prince in Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, which I kind of love. Um, I'm sure there's ships of that too. I'm sure. Skylar Aston is the new guy uh, who is playing him. And yeah, he oh. is from the from the weird Anna Faris musical movie. Pitch Perfect. Oh. That's what he was in. Okay, there Pitch we go. Perfect. My mother saw that, I think. I have watched a lot of Pitch Perfect uh, videos because my daughter really likes the singing. Same with my mom. <laughs> so like like that's like the only thing I'm watching where there are like relationships that are super a part of the plot and there's like options so you can have like teams. You're a liar. You're a liar. What am I lying? Why am I lying? A liar because the freshest shit that we have to talk about is Good Place. Oh, yeah. you're oh, right. Oh, this is the only show I watch with intense relationships in it. Well, there how about of, literally there, The Good Place? There are a lot of intense relationships, there are but a like lot of intense Mm. But again, like again, it's like they're, and I guess they're sort of forbidden. Mm. Okay, this no, is going to be. I, I I don't know because I because because of the Janet thing. I love Where yes. You fall on the Janet Tahani. Um, what's his name? Why wow, Jason? Jason Mendoza. Uh, like love triangle. Like where do you oh, stand? Oh 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 oh, that's really hard. Um, oh, I know. I asked the tough ones. I'm from the Corey Graves school. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, because I love Janet and I want Janet to be happy uh -huh. because she's perfect and yep. she's not a robot and not a girl, but she's, she's perfect. not a girl. Uh, I mean, I did kind of like it the like five seconds she was she called Ted Danson dad, uh, but you know, like I don't know, like that's yeah. that's really hard. Uh, yeah. Uh, and where I, do you fall on the is Ele are Eleanor and Cheedy truly? Yes, they are forever. I mean, like yes. Right. That's I I I feel like that's I feel like that's totally gonna have to be I, a thing. I, I don't I'm, know. I'm happy with it, but I can I can see I, I I wonder how others feel because I like it, but I also like them as best friends who aren't interested in one another. I just like no, them that's together. it's true. That's no, that's that's definitely true. Um, yeah, that's that is hard. The Tahani Jason, the fact that it's yeah. Jason. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, he's a beautiful man, like yeah, uh, and a and a beautiful soul. Um, a beautiful Floridian. <laughs> I like how they had to like figure out what the actual Jacksonville Jaguar like chants were because they, they no one was yelling Bortles until like after the show. Uh, let's see. Someone's talking about how Eleanor Chidi is the obvious one. Yes, Eleanor Chidi is definitely. For, although Eleanor Tahani has also like. Yeah, and I, I frankly, I, I, I feel I, like it's a polyamorous mass, and I feel like you can't like. I know. I have feelings about it too because I like the I like how bisexual Eleanor is. I like that yeah. she's into whatever, and yeah. um, and I like her, her. Her interest in Tahani is quite intense and obvious in the first season 
and I, I, and I have a few feelings about it and that I just, I really like her with Chidi, but like, I don't know, like. It, well, I, I never felt exploitative, right? Mm -hmm. Like. The, sh the writers of the show, I think, did a very good job of like not making it like tee hee, like mm -hmm. I kissed a girl and I liked it, right? Like it was just this like, oh, whoa, hey, I'm into Tahani. Like, let's like, yeah. let's, like I gotta how could I it. not be? Have you right. seen her? Like that kind of like that writing where it's like, duh. So, so Tahani and other Hemsworth. I mean, that was a great moment. Although, okay, no, let's get back to Chidi because I yeah. really liked Chidi's Earth girlfriend because I like, I thought that was oh. a fantastic yeah. relationship. She was amazing. Like I wanted her to be friends with everyone. Yeah. Like I don't want her to die, but like, like that was fantastic. Um, and that really, that my wife and I had a lot of conversations about how conflicted mm -hmm. we felt because like, obviously, you know, GD Eleanor soulmates, although not really just that's how it works out. Um, but like they did a fantastic job of getting someone who really cared for him and got yeah. him. Yeah. Um, and was willing to to do the emotional lifting to be with him. Um, yeah, because there's a lot. I mean, yeah. Oh, I know that's it's good. Tough. That's good stuff. Thank you, for remind, thank you for reminding. Thank you for It's been so long. Like I haven't seen I know, it in a while. But, like, but I think it's coming back this Thursday. And um, like I think I think tomorrow is the new app, which means I can watch it Friday because I watched it on Hulu. But anyway, uh, I just I I don't know. It's weird because. They they have set it up, and I, I I think they know where they're going. I think this show has been so confident so far that I really am not concerned at all about. I just want to take the ride. I don't care where I go, but I just listening, I, listening to the podcast that the official podcast they put out is fascinating because they definitely like know like I I don't think they have like a ten year plan. Like I think they really do like kind of consider it year by year. The, well, next season is going to be the last one though, right? I think they said that. Have they? I know Christian Schofer is ending. I feel like they're just. Like if they get a new year, they just up the ante and are like, everyone's Smurfs now. What are you gonna do? Yeah. We're the good place, you know? And eat my farts. Yeah. <laughs> they literally eat my farts. Um, cause because yeah, they just are they all they do is up the ante and have like 10 seasons worth of material in three episodes. And and I feel like, and again, I feel like that tension is what's so good about shipping like that's shipping at its best when there are yeah. options mm -hmm. and they are painful options and it's not just like i mean okay let's let's talk about the what was the major cultural like shipping thing the whole team edward team jacob business oh sure that, like, yeah, I'll, I'll right like you know like that was the for a while i mean i worked in a bookstore and like we were selling the buttons like we were definitely trying to like, cash in on that whole what, what have you were you on i had not read them or seen them at that point so well, I did not have strong now, preferences. You know what it is. I mean, I'm, a, absorbed I'm, it. I'm opposed to like creepy imprinting. So I guess I'm team Edward. Oh, you prefer the, you prefer the, uh, the weird the, old man. I'm still in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Team you know, Alucard. I am definitely team Alucard. So. Oh yeah. I'm always team Alucard. That's definitely true. Although, uh, yeah, I don't know because I'm, I'm fine with, uh, wait, which Alucard are we talking about? Uh, I'm talking Castlevania Symphony of the Night video game for the PlayStation. Hello, I was, I'm sorry, I was talking about um, the new uh, Netflix Helsing. show. Oh, Helsing. Okay. A lot of shippable characters in Helsing. Oh, if we're opening up anime, that's going to like pop up all of my thoughts about okay. Ranma one half. Oh my God. Yeah. I, get, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I No, but I, I, wait. Okay. Wait. Whoa. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Ranma one half? Because I have many thoughts about that show as well. I just want Ryoga to be happy. I love him too. He's my favorite. He's always been my favorite. And I wanted him to get with Akane. Right? Like, I just. Yeah, he's obviously the better option than Ranma. Like, I, and, I don't know. And who's, the, and who's the pancake girl who's in love with Ranma? Oh, Yosuno Miyake girl. I don't. Um, Cause I think she was like, I was like, can't they like go off and sort of be horrible together? And then like I, my, oh. my piggy, my piggy love can thrive. <laughs> Yoga man, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed that that I'm I'm truly glad that the first uh, like feeling you had about Rama was about Ryoga because he is my favorite and I um and I only really read I only watched the cartoon I didn't read yeah. the manga um yeah. I read the first volume of it it's the same but like uh I was always Team Ryoga I just really liked him and I thought that and I just I I I had weird non feelings about Rama because I only liked him as a chick yeah yeah. Because I, I, I tapped out of the show when it became only people he became engaged to. 
Oh yeah. Well, I, and I, I was only ever like sort of like dipping in and out, but like, yeah. I just, I liked Ryoga as the yeah. like incompetent bad boy. I don't know that just <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, yes. it just, it, well, I mean, in terms, if we're talking about fresh ships, then like my love of Jess on the Gilmore girls, like, mm. I mean, that is, I mean, are they, but again, like, is that a ship because they, they were together, but they don't end up together. I mean, the problem with the problem with any of the ships on on Gilmore Girls is that I just I don't like Rory. <laughs> so like that is so fair, I too. But again, like it's the character you relate to with the character you crush on, and so of course I'm Rory Jess because I too was an obnoxious teenager who thought she was <laughs> fucking red books or whatever Rory's fucking deal is, and also Jess is my problematic fave. I think that's what the millennials call him. No, that's fair. Um, and I mean, for me, the problem is that I always like I at the first thing I really saw him in and like imprinted on him was his Peter Petrelli and Heroes. So like, oh, I never saw that show. Oh, oh, that was rough. Um, yeah, like it's because like yeah. So Rory, I'm like, oh, they're all awful. She can be a Huntsberger. She can be with. I don't want to like. They're all bad. Like as much as I hate Rory, I think all of her three dudes are bad. Yeah, I think Jess is a good like. I I like. Do I have a problem with? Boys who kind of talk down to me about male writers who wear leather jackets. Like, yes, I do. I don't, I'm here. I am. I'm admitting it. This is a radical space that I'm being honest in. I'm like, whatever. But like, I, I, I smashed my toe in my desire oh. to come in and defend Jess. Oh, no. Okay. Rachel, Rachel's defending Jess, like yes, specifically. Yes, Jess forever. He's yes, the best. Forever. <laughs> there we go. All right, we oh, have yeah. confirmation. That was, that was the greatest moment I mean, on the show ever. Date rape Rory, but like, I, apparently, you know, he tries well, to. I tap out every time at that point. Okay, of because, <laughs> she, like, okay. she's she is so acknowledging much. that that's a problem. Is do you, need, do you want to come on? Do you want to get a microphone? Do you want to okay. be a part oh of this? Oh my god, yeah. Let's make this. Let's make this real. <laughs> All right, Rachel. Here you go. Okay. So, yeah, no, for real. The 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 whole date rape scene in season three is like the. It's, I stop watching every time at that, and the last time I did a Gilmore Girls rewatch, like I stopped watching. Because yeah. I couldn't watch that scene again where I was just like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Like, it's no, bad. And it's bad. But until that point, and then when he comes back later, be like, here's a paperback book. You want to get it on? And I'm like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every time. He grows up. And he changes. He and he fails does. to get his own TV show. And fails to yeah, get his own TV show. Yeah, he does a lot of show. failing. But, he, you know, he he lives the dream. And, like, he, he, he actually does. becomes a legitimate writer on, like, Rory's hot mess. And I'm just like. And I have to say. When it came to the revival, I had to sadly realize that Jess was too good for Rory. <laughs> he is too good for her because she's a right? fire. That entire the only good part of the of the of that new of the year on the life was Emily's storyline. Totally, that I was totally 100%. there for. I know, and I, and I was just like, how can the Paladinos, who are actual writers, because they are literally writing the thing I'm watching, know so little about writing? Yeah. Rory's entire arc, it's like, you can't just fail at blogging and then buy a newspaper. What are you talking about? And it's not, it's not <laughs> like, Oh, it infuriated me. No. Ugh. But Emily, I was there for. Yeah. Totally there for that. Okay. Yeah. This has been good yeah. talk. Good talk. You, uh, we're, talking, we're talking about ships, Rachel. Do you have anything you want to add about Yeah, uh, we're talking uh, about 2019 uh, ships. I mean, John and Aaron forever. There we go. OTP. Do I know That's this show? Know. Okay. Far Farscape. I'm sorry. I don't. I. I people keep uh. telling me that it's like hotter Star Trek, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. It is. It's pretty. It's. It's hotter. There's more fart jokes. Okay. There's. Hmm. There's. Um. There's a lot more leather. There's helium farts. Uh, there's a lot of. There's a lot of leather. Tell me a little bit more than this fart motif that we've lived <laughs> on. Like, what else am I coming there for? Um. I mean. It's it is it is kind of like sexy Star Trek with Muppets right. with Muppets right. really good Muppet work really good Muppet work. Um, I mean, I am watching very, the Seeker, so I mean it's very like it's very late nineties early two thousands. It's very much responding to a kind of sanitized Star Trek: The Next Generation kind of yeah. sci-fi. So it's very much it's very much responding. It's like a pre. Pre Firefly, pre BSG, edgy space opera kind of thing. Where, where the main guy looks like Paul Martin bondage gear. So. What was that? I missed what Molly was. Oh, I said y'all are not the only people who have told me I should get on it, but I just it's it's hard, man. All those old shows they have like fifty episodes per season, and it's just like exhausting. Where I just contemplate how much time I have to spend to care about these ships. I do ha have a, a pretty um, extensive skip it, watch it guide to Farscape. <laughs> So there are some definite skippable episodes. I've put a lot of thought into this. 
I'm so happy this is the first episode that my wife uh, is joining us on the uh, We Ship It in 2019 show. So uh, I can uh, I can definitely uh, link to her uh, uh, her giant I think it's show that rewatch blog that she did for a while. That's true. I got through about halfway through the second season before I gave up on that. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. fair. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you Rachel. Okay. More, <laughs> more that's all I got. Right. Okay. Excellent. And that's my wife with thoughts about Gilmore Girls and Sexy Space Muppets. Yeah, sure. Hey, I summoned her forth with talk of Jess. She definitely heard Jess and had to like come running in. So I, I would have too. If <laughs> she stumped her toe. I don't know if anyone heard oh, that. She stumped her toe so getting in to talk about Jess. I, you know, I've probably done that. Where it's been like, I'm sorry, is someone talking about the Gilmore Girls? I have opinions about this. I still haven't finished it. I was doing really good. I was halfway, more than halfway through season eight, the last one, which I never watched because I got so mad um, that I stopped watching. Oh, when she left, was that the one where she left or when she came, or when Palladino came back? No, she came back for a year in the life. They left for the final season of the show because okay. the network wouldn't give them a raise. And so I, and I just couldn't care at all about it. Um, and and now I'm trying to make my way through it, but I I just I I flaked out again because I was like Lorelai gets married to Chris. Well, okay, let's talk about Lorelai because oh, while as much oh. as I like can't deal with Rory and Rory's nonsense, like Lorelai aggravates me, but like I'm at least there. Like I I yeah. care more about her happiness than I care about Rory's. So like, Absolutely. which which team are we at? And there's a couple teams, and we've already touched on Tenth Kingdom. So I'd like to point out that Max from season one was the wolf in Tenth Kingdom. So there we oh. go, callback. I okay. I'm gonna make a bold. I get it. And are these ships or not? I mean, like whatever. Is it ships? Can sure. be the whatever. name of Asplof after dark when I want it. But like, um, <laughs> I I was Can you I ship really it? liked Jason. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. I, I, I like Jason. that. He was a hard worker who um, didn't look as much like a scary baby when he grew a beard, and he <laughs> had a, a job and was employed and clearly showered and could cook and loved her and wanted to make her happy. And like, and and I just, I, I mean, he had other problems. We all have our problems, but I thought that he was the least nuts of all of her boyfriends. Well, like, he got, he he understood where she was coming from. Yeah. Like he grew up in that world and like, yeah. like did the similar kind of rejecting but still benefiting thing, which is yeah. a, a big problem with the world. We want to get into it. <laughs> Just like the strange, like I don't know. There's, there's an interesting comedy that Gilmore Girls fails to offer, but um, yeah. but like yeah, no, I, I see that. I, I didn't mind Jason. I mean, he looked a little like a hobbit, but oh yeah, no, I mean like whatever. But he trained his dog to move a little to the left. And I always thought that that was a fucking hilarious gag. I couldn't, I just really liked it. And I thought her reason for dumping him was stupid, which was that her dad decided to be a dick. And I was like, that's a bad reason to dump like a hot man who, and again, oh, but, oh, oh but, and people did hate him though, because he was like, he had strange hangups, which I was super into. Um, Cause I, I like a, I like an angsty guy and his whole weird, like, that was super great and we're laying in bed, but now I need you to go because if there's any distractions in my room, I can't sleep. So you have to go sleep in my guest room. And I was just like, this is a man that I would fall in love with. This is the level of emotional problems and insane fixes that I tend to just really fall for. So yeah, I liked him. And, but other than that, I'm, 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 I'm team Luke. I, well, it's yes. I mean, I don't know. Luke just, Luke could be a jerk. Yeah. And he could be and he could be incredibly self-involved. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but like, I don't know. Luke was just there for her. And I don't want to go yeah. like nice guy. I don't want to be like nice, like give him nice guy points, but like he was just like there. And he like there. and 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 I didn't think I didn't buy, I guess it was one of those issues of like I thought his daughter's plot line was stupid. Every, yes, yes, no. Every minute of it was stupid. Well, and it was trying was, to recreate. It was trying to recreate Rory's precociousness, but yeah. like that was already dumb. I didn't want. I didn't want more. Than, more, more no, of that. I didn't want more. Like, 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 like little white girls who do good at school. And I'm like, all right, show. Like, but no, I. I guess my objection to her was that it, it was so obvious that it was a widget because they were like, well, we're we. I can't have them just happy. <laughs> And it's like, why not? Like, I just—it's it's interesting that television tends to stray away from that idea of like, what what is boring about a happy couple acting functional? Uh, I mean, you've got to have conflict, and I get that, and you've got to have something to yeah, like work not? toward. Because there are, 
Yeah. I mean, because, you know, like that was I didn't watch. I stopped watching the American office like kind of midway through. So like after I think right around the time that Jim and Pam became. I don't thing. know. I've never seen it. I've seen it, the episode of the office where there are bats. And sure. that's it. That's the only. Yeah. One. I mean, it was a, a weird thing of like it was it was the thing of like the British office was able to end with like, you know, the the shipping couple like getting together and like it being kind of like this culmination of everything you sort of been working towards and like and that was a moment for me like i remember like my best friend from high school like we were we were we had found copies of it online and like had downloaded it because it hadn't been released on dvd in america yet and we were like sitting in front of his tv and like it looked like they weren't going to be together and i was freaking out and then they were together and like i grabbed pillows and just started wailing on him because he didn't believe in their love and i did and like that was so great and like it was undercut because the whole like they have like whole talk during the christmas season about how like the show isn't real and like it cuts off at points and you don't know what actually comes after so like they might be getting together and then they could break up five seconds later and we'd never know because that's like the power of television but like still in that moment it was wonderful mm -hmm. and then with like pam and jim it's like okay i guess they're together cool next you know like there just wasn't that same kind of tension there wasn't that same like friction yeah. and from what i gather from folks who kept watching it like they kept Trying to find, they can't find the right school for their daughter to go to, and I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, I don't. So yeah, I definitely come to the legit ships. If we're going to be the shipping police, if we're going to be the coast guard, not get coast paid guard. while we're oh my god on furlough. <laughs> hey, keep it a topical. Um, yeah, I feel like there has to be some kind of there has to be a tension and a and a and and a. I don't know, something that either socially makes it fraught, textually makes it fraught, and isn't just like, it's yeah. obviously building towards this. And there is a a predetermined outcome. So yeah, I don't know. And I, I, don't, know. I don't know, I guess I, my objection, I mean, this whole got started because I, I read an, inter, an an article on the internet that annoyed me um, about a show I've never heard of. <laughs> the, best, about. the best premise. The, I, yeah, exactly. Like, and I, it was this article about a show. I don't know what it is and I've never heard of it before today, but it was like, the title was literally like, please don't ship these two characters from this. And I was like, I beg your pardon. And I clicked on it and like it made, and it, and it, and it made the argument that I always, that always will make me mad, which is the the idea that um, if you ship wrong, then like you're, or if, if you ship wrong, or if you allow yourself to ship, or or you have problematic faves, then like then then your media will colonize you, and then you'll be more likely to get into a problematic relationship. And it's like it always comes down to me with this idea of like I believe that women are smart. I think the majority of ship shipping culture is is female focused, is or a, a woman focused, I should say. Like, um, I just see mostly women engaging with it, and um, this idea that like we're all just so dumb that like we don't realize that if there's like with Twilight, where it's like, well, but Bella, like Bella is so problematic, and it's so problematic with Edward because like he grooms her, and it's like, yeah, you know what? Like, um, this book is definitely a good cautionary tale of if there is a hundred and ten year old man who is going to your high school. <laughs> um, you know, and it's just sort of like, I think that most people are actually pretty good at, I think when people have trouble telling fantasy from reality, there's something going on beyond improper ships. Um, Fair. and yeah, like there's something going on there beyond bad ships and, um, and, and you can have a problematic fave and not like necessarily be like, like, I don't necessarily think that we can say that desire causes poor life choices. I mean, I mean, actually, no, we definitely can say that because I've said that several times myself about myself, but like, you know, I don't, I don't know if we can say like that or I just, with the, with the media argument, it's like, if you ship Hannibal and Alana Bloom, I don't know if you're any more or less likely to be like in a weird psychic polyamorous relationship with the Chesapeake Gripper. <laughs> like I just, well, okay. I'm going to put a little bit of pushback because I think no, we, let's what go we, for it. Cause, Come cause at me, thing, bro. And maybe this is less about shipping and more about like romantic comedy in general. But I think one trope we've seen like really wrestled with is the nice guy trope and the like obsessive guy who yeah. like will win you back with his love, right? Yeah. And like, you know, the sort of the say anything thing. Like I love say anything. I will continue watching say anything. But like 
that's creepy. And that like model of like, if you're a nice enough guy, you deserve the girl. And she like is required to pay attention to you when you're like blaring your boom box outside her window. Like I can recognize that's bad. And like society has like a society internalized that nice guys finish last or nice guys deserve the girls sort of model for so long and have kind of rejected it. Um, but I don't know, like, 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 is there, a, is there a tension in that? Like, is there a, uh, an issue that we have to sort of do wrestle with and be like, Oh, this stuff that so. sure like 16 I, candles, like that's kind of, ooh. no, I'm there. And I, but I, I do think that there's like a difference between like, I think that like, I can, again, like, um, I think it's fine to notice things like that and to, t and it's crucial that we talk about them. But I also don't think that like, if you, I guess I just don't think that the bad relationships I've had in my life have become because I watched the wrong films that gave me the wrong idea about love. Like I, no, think, I, think, that I, I think that's can, fair. I think I can see what's wrong with Pretty in Pink and with Say Anything and with all these nice guy films, and also, like, and also secretly like, you know, I still love Ioni Sky and John Cusack together. Like that's still yeah, like you're, it's you know, okay. like, and I think we can talk at that hard conversation of like, is this is this a, is is this a healthy relationship or not? And I think we need to talk, I mean, even though we talk incessantly about media and our culture, I think we need to have harder conversations. But I think at the end of the day, like the way I always put it as is like, just admit your dog has fleas, you know, <laughs> like, and then it's okay because like, it's okay to have problematic interests and to exist in the realm of, the, and, and, the, and the fantasy, um, like I, like my love of Dragon Age too, <laughs> right, like I go back to that sometimes when I think about it. Only two, not one or three. Um, but like the guy, the two boys that like my character both times, the two times I played it, like both times she has fallen for a boy, and one time it was for this insane murderous elf who was like traumatized and like goes on a killing rampage. And I was like, sure, let's do this Bonnie and Clyde shit right now. I'll kill your sister. I don't give a fuck. And then like. Um, and then, and we ended up together and I was just like, so in love with this, with, with this character on this video game. And the second time I, I went with my second fave, which is this like uh, mage power rights activist who like, I think like you, I don't think there's any way you can stop him from like literally blowing up like a church full of priests. <laughs> And whether or not it is justified is kind of, you know, they are oppressing mages. Okay, whatever. But like, he's also your, you know, d depressive demon nightmare boy. Like, and, I, and, and both of those times I was just like, yes, let's be together and murder them all. And I, I have not yet like acquired a lover who will take me on a killing rampage a la Heather's. Like I just, it's, I'm <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I'm glad like, to hear that Molly. <laughs> I'm okay. You don't need, you don't need to check know, in on you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, I think, I think I'm safe from magicians and elves who want me to go on murder rampages with them. Like just because I enjoyed it as like an expression of the fantasy and the, and the id in this video game context. Like, I mean, it's like the whole thing with like, Grand Theft Auto does not make you beat up people and steal their money so that you can run over fire hydrants. Like that's just not, you can't make that argument and there's never been any proof of it. So I have yet to see the, the evidence that like a bad ship is gonna make you make poor relationship choices. I, I do agree. I definitely think that there's, it's one thing to talk about, like, what does this say about society at mm -hmm. large? And what does this mean by this specific 13 year old yeah. girl who like just really thinks Hux has it going on? Sure. And, and I mean, we were talking about like John Hughes films, but like, I, I remember when I saw Pretty in Pink for the first time, I was like, how can she end up with the, whatever that guy, whatever that Brad Packer's name is, like, <laughs> she needs to be with Ducky. And then I watched it like six years ago and I was like, Ducky's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Like, no, that guy is nice. He respects her. He's cool. Like, but like, but also, I mean, but then again, I, I love, what's his name of that movie more than any of them? Um, Stargate. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Michael Anthony Hall? No, 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 no. Um, no, the guy in Stargate, the, the, he's in, he's also in Secretary. What is his name? Oh, Spader. Spader, James Spader in that film where he's like never been more beautiful and he's just like got an open neck, like Oxford shirt and his rolling joints and talking weak. Well, and I'm just like, well, if we're if we're into like Ioni Sky and James Spader, it seems like we all just need to be watching White Palace, you know. So what is this? What is this? Uh, it is uh, a very uh, entertaining film where I think it's James Spader and oh 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 um, an older actress. Uh, 
Go on. Uh, who's the brain completely? Okay, I, I have access to Google, but Ioni Sky is in it. Okay. And, and does it all sorts of uh, very nice um, acting. Um, yeah. Susan Sarandon. So it's James Spader and oh, Susan Sarandon oh. having a kind of like May, December thing going on. Not even May, December, like patriarchy, like May, July thing going on. Yeah, sure. Um, and, uh, but yeah, but there's, yeah, there's, it's, it's good stuff. Interesting. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. No, like I, yeah, it, it, we are allowed to grow and change. Like I'll never think there's anything. I mean, I still love Heather's. I'm like, I mean, obviously they could never, thank God they can never remake that movie. Just given like every, it's a hor <laughs> it's horrifying when you watch, you look back on it and you're like, this movie was made. Yeah. And it is now still on Netflix and it's such an artifact of its time. But like, I just, I really, I think that we can talk about issues of like what expectations do does media give young young people when it comes to discovering who they are and what they should expect and and have that be slightly divorced from please don't ship this couple because you shouldn't be in a relationship with a television murderer and it's just like <laughs> there's got to be a middle path we can walk here of like allowing people to exist in the fantastical and still have like real talk about what real relationships should be like like you know, just kink it out, man. Like, it's fine. Find a nice person. Guys, just, kink it out in 2019. Yeah, kink it out in 2019. Have your problematic uh, shit. That is definitely one to grow on. So I think that's going to be the best place to uh, shut things down. I'm Molly, sorry I ruined your show. No, <laughs> no, never. You never ruin the show. People are going to be, there's you're, There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. There's going to be a yeah, lot Molly, of people have Molly, a lot of questions. Yeah. And I'm, look, I'm looking forward to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, to people yelling at me about uh, the cast uh, mistakes I made about Tenth Kingdom on Twitter. So how could you, <laughs> uh, Molly? What's going on? Let let the people know about you and uh, I don't where know. they can find I'm, you and what's I'm, happening. I'm your 2019 Dengromancer. I'm writing a book. I have some others that are out. Look me up on the internet. My last name is Tanzer. I write things. Nice. They're available in stores. Excellent. Love it. Yeah. Uh, and I'm Lee Kessler. What about you? <laughs> hey guys. Uh, I'm <laughs> people are, are informing me that, uh, they're still watching and the show was not ruined. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <person. laughs> and, uh, oh, and also, uh, Ukiyo is the pancake girl, uh, that has been uh, clarified. So, uh, folks, uh, if our folks are interested in what's going on with me, I just, uh, had a fantastic interview with, uh, Ed Bermilla of Gin and Tacos talking about getting elected to public office. That was a lot of fun. You can check out his podcast, Mass for Shut-Ins. Um, I'm on episode 12. Uh, otherwise, uh, folks can find me, uh, impersonating HP Lovecraft three times a week at askforlovecraft.com. If you've enjoyed these conversations between Molly and myself and you want to be a part of the live chat and uh, ask questions and uh, correct us about uh, what's going on in Ranma. Uh, you can join the Ask Lovecraft Appreciation Society Facebook group. We have a lot of fun, a lot of dank memes. No, no dank memes. But uh, we do have actually a lot of fun. Some really great artists uh, and creators sharing some of the cool things they do. And it's uh, just, I don't know, it's a, it's a nice, cool place with uh, so far absolutely zero white supremacists. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, I'll take that. What else, where else can we say that about in 2019? <laughs> uh, folks can find out about live shows and other things that I've got going down at LehmanKessler.com. I'm going to be in the Cleveland area in about two months, March, I think, uh, at Cleveland Concoction. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, you can just uh, find me screaming into the void on Twitter at Lehman Kessler. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's going to do it uh, for me, Molly. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for starting off 2019, helping to midwife this year Shouting for all. You. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, uh, yelling uh, back and forth with my wife about Jess yeah. from Gilmore Girls. It's very anytime. important. Literally anytime. I'm never too busy for that. <laughs> Fan. Fantastic. Uh, we'll be seeing more of you uh, throughout the year uh, because for some strange reason, you keep saying yes when I ask you to be on the show. So I'm very grateful for that. Well, I, I, need, I need to butter you up so we can have that second session of the... Um... Oh, right. Uh, yeah. The uh, uh, Hollow Earth Expedition. The Hollow yes. Earth thing that, that Glancy was running. Like, I want to yeah. conclude that. And, I, and I, <laughs> so I have to be like, well, sure, I'll come on the show just to keep keep me in your mind so that you remember <laughs> that that there's a there's a second part of that somewhere, I think. If uh, folks have uh, missed out, uh, you can go back to the last episode, episode 19, and uh, watch uh, Scott Glancy, uh, GM, Molly, Rachel Kolar, and myself in a game of Hollow Earth Expedition where we shot a bunch of Nazis. Yeah. Uh, and I fed uh, uh, champagne mixed with glass to a relatively innocent bystander. So, was he? Eh, he was pretty bad. Yeah. He was pretty gross. 
Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all uh, for uh, being a part of this wonderful show. Uh, if you'd like to support us, you can always go to patreon.com slash asklovecraft. Uh, that helps us keep the lights on around here. Uh, but otherwise, thank you all. And uh, Molly, I'll be seeing you again. Bye. Bye, all. <laughs>